How's it going everybody, Braddock here. I want to talk to you guys today a little bit about my Mass Casualty Active Shooter Response Bag. I've owned and operated a DJ company for the last 10 to 12 years now. A lot of the events I do revolve around high school homecomings, proms, banquets, etc. So I wanted a kit that I could take with me, God forbid, an active shooter scenario. So a little bit about this bag. This is the 511 Slingster. It's designed primarily to be a medical bag. On the back, you have one sling, and this allows you to sling the bag in front of you and get to all your important equipment, treat your casualty, and then swing it behind you. So you're not going from patient to patient dragging around a bag. Down at the bottom, we have a quick litter. This is a 1,200 pound capacity litter. 21 feet of nylon webbing to be used as uh, any type of hasty harness. Right above that we have triage tapes that were just re-rolled so they're more compact. Moving to the back, they have a mesh compartment which I keep some shears, permanent marker, and a fluorescent vest which is to distinguish me between any possible threat. And then over here we have a set of gloves. I always use black as a base layer and then throw blues or any other color on top of that. So as you move from patient to patient, you take off your gloves and you don't have wet, sweaty palms to reapply gloves onto. So as I pull out off a set of gloves and I see black, I know that's my base layer and I need to reapply. And then right by that we have more gloves. So I build all my kits based off the March algorithm, M-A-R-C-H, massive hemorrhage, airway, respiratory, circulation, hypothermia. So each compartment zipper is labeled with simple electrical tape, red being obviously bleeding. So this first compartment, as you zip it down, there's two buckles here that will stop the zipper. And when you fold the compartment open, you can have all access to uh, everything you need in the bleeding compartment. If you need more access further down, all you have to do is unclip here, unclip there, And then now you have more access to all your bleeding material. So this kit particularly is designed to treat roughly four to possibly eight patients. So what I do is I run eight cat gen seven tourniquets. I keep all of these in the packaging simply because this is my excess tourniquets. Um, when I go to this, I know, yes, it's in the wrapper. It hasn't been used and they're good to go. Any tourniquet I carry on me, my first line tourniquets, uh, are going to be out of package, staged, and always ready to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, six inch Israeli bandages, and some combat gauze. This is quick clot combat gauze with a hemostatic agent. We have three triangular bandages, and then a eight by 10 abdomen bandage as well and we have two of those back behind the tourniquets you have another compartment here which i keep a few abdomen pads we have an 8x10 abd pad and this is a 10x30 trauma dressing if we move down to the bottom there's a small mesh compartment with zippers on both sides and in here i keep on my gauze, so H and H compressed gauze, eight, nine of those, and then off to the side we have some trauma tape, and this is my massive hemorrhage compartment. And moving on to the back, we have all of our airway and respiratory. We have quite a few NPAs with the lube taped on to the back, ready to go. So about eight of those and then some hyphen dented chest seals. And then also we have ARS three quarter decompression needles. This is the 14 gauge decompression needle. And moving on to hypothermia. So not too much going on here. A lot of very cheap Mylar blankets. So we have one, two, three, Four, 
five. And I believe that is it. Mylar blanket. Well, that about wraps it up. I highly recommend you guys get out there and learn all you can about trauma pre-hospital medicine. A lot of this equipment, again, you can get fairly cheap. You can go to your local army surplus shop and find it for about a quarter of the price. Yes, a lot of it's expired, but in the long run, a lot of the hemostatic agents, the tourniquets, uh, anything you buy, chest seals, etc., is all still going to work. So get out there, buy yourself a bag, buy some equipment, get some training, and save lives. We'll catch y'all later.